नमस्ते एंड वेलकम अगेन टू प्लैनेट टू सोलर एस्ट्रोलॉजी सो फ्रेंड्स टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट केतु एवरीबडी नोज दैट राहू एंड केतु आर वन बॉडी एंड दे आर सेपरेटेड दे हैव टू डिफरेंट जोन्स वन इज इन साउथ वन इज इन नॉर्थ एंड बेसिकली राहू इज अ हेड एंड केतु इज रिमेनिंग बॉडी पोर्शन Rahu and Ketu rules today's world. You can call it as material life, Kali Yuga, modernization, technological yuga, technological era, lots and lots of new dimensions, new things, new science, new technology. Everything new and everything is ruled by Rahu and Ketu because these planets are non-visible. but they do have strong strong impact on our body because when satyuga was there that time only it was decided that kaliyuga will rule the world and that time maximum prosperity in terms of technology will also take place and at the same time maximum corruption in people's mind will also take place that how to utilize the technology and how to uh you, you know how to challenge those technology also this is just word technology i am using it this is applicable to everything whatever we are seeing but whatever we are facing and whatever we are experiencing in this world around us everything everything is minute things are really having strong impact of rahu and ketu but friends we will talk about ketu as ketu do not have head with it because head thought process uh, all type of intelligence ideas uh, everything good bad everything has gone to ketu uh, rahu but what about ketu ketu is a remaining body dhad what we call it as a. from neck portion the ketu is alone till to portion so this is just all things what we are experiencing through ketu positions in our chart so when ketu do not have head that time this ketu is always in a moving position or always in a motion and when anything is always in a motion because that motion less things do not have any support head is the support to give shape to particular thing unless it is of no use and ketu is like ketu is such a serpent which doesn't have head it doesn't have any direction that is why ketu has to be channelized in our chart wherever ketu is posited in our chart that house related urge that house related signification is always wanted by the native in spite of having many things in life but that particular signification is lacking say for example if anybody is having ketu in 9th house of the chart so definitely paternal bliss or father's bliss maybe this native is away from father or not very uh, is not in a good terms with father or anything related to father or maybe this person is more inclined towards spirituality or uh, person always wanted to uh, go to pilgrimages or always wanted to go on a spiritual path but some or other way things are not getting fulfilled in this person's life ketu is basically it is said uh, see in every book there there is something you get about the shadow planets you know so when i was uh, studying and still i am studying astrology and when i read many books so in one book uh, written by shri k j mehta uh, i happen to read that ketu is uh, short you know ketu is short like mercury so people who are short they have strong ketu impact on that along with mercury but at the same time 
the nature of ketu is like mars because it has forceful and aggressive movement it is a tail tail is always in a motion the tail is never steady that is why we see that flag is denoted by ketu flag because flag doesn't have any support only uh, it is in motion because of the wind okay so that is why in ketu remedies also we suggest uh, to offer a flag in a temple or just worship the flag or always keep one flag in the house also because it is the uh, prateek or it denotes victory flag is a victory vijay that is why in 11th house also ketu is said to be good or rahu is said to be good any uh, malefic planets in 11th house are very uh, beneficial to the native so ketu is short but it has very heavy element ketu is like uh, full of uh, muscle full of water it is jad tatva or we can call it as a jad means heavy it's very heavy elemental uh, shadow also uh, it has tendency of mars or ketu is very aggressive ketu is very angry full and ketu is like ketu is not happy because head is not with it ketu is always lingering for the head ketu wants direction and that is why ketu wherever with whomever it is placed with ketu is behaving like that planet moreover ketu is more comfortable with jupiter because ketu when do not have head that time all wrong thought process are not going to come in mind as well as good thought process also so ketu becomes nirvikar without any thoughts when one has head that time only our brain start working you know because we think more from mind than from heart when we will start thinking from heart when our emotions are fully activated that time only we can say that yes my ketu is getting activated when you are not uh, bringing any thoughts which are connected to material life like if i am doing something for somebody and always i uh, i am in a uh, i am in a process that yes some day i will get something in return or even though i am doing something for anybody and that anybody is doing something for else uh, other people only and then i am always in a dilemma that i did so much for this person but i didn't get anything in return that means my ketu is not activated my rahu is activated but when i will say that i do not expect anything whatever was in my box whatever was in my limitations i tried to help that person without any expectation i know it is very difficult but still i will say that my ketu is activated in the chart this is ketu that is why ketu is very much connected to spirituality because in spirituality you do not expect anything you are nirvikar nirvikar means without any shape your thought do not have any shape because it will go on changing the shape sometimes it is very heavy sometimes it is very light sometimes it is beautiful sometimes it is ugly also but at the end it doesn't have any shape it is nirvikar niragas niragans niragas means very plain very soft and very pure even though it is very blunt pan- planet because ketu do not have anything to give you except spirituality except nirvikar except uh, you know uh, good things whatever it has it has a strong uh, affinity strong uh, desire to give you spiritual element but many do not know that ketu is also 
Karaka for victory. That is why I said before that in 3, 6 and 11th house, Ketu is giving victory to that particular Karakatva. Second thing, wherever Ketu is there in your chart, with what nakshatra it is posited in, what planet it is posited in, this plays a very important role. As I said that Ketu is more comfortable with Jupiter. Then secondly, it is comfortable with Mercury also. But first, Ketu is in control with Jupiter. So, Ketu and Jupiter combination is said to be like spiritual combination. Ketu itself has a strong intuition power. Ketu is our sixth sense. When Ketu is uh, aggravated because head is not there, the heart is there, Muladhar Chakra is there, everything is there connected in whole body. And Ketu has the capacity to go till the Sahasra Chakra even though head is somewhere else. And when that Sahasra Chakra will get activated through this Ketu, that time the Rahu element is totally diminished and that Rahu also converts into Ketu. And that time we can say that awakening of the soul, awakening of the body, awakening of the chakras has taken place. It's a very difficult task, it's a very difficult process, but yet it is not impossible. If somebody decides that yes, I have to do good sadhana, good dedication, then yes, you have to activate your ketu. You have to think from your heart. You should not think from your mind because mind will give you lots of different thoughts also, expectations also, but your heart will not give you because heart and soul is similar to each and every person. But mind is different for each and every person. Thought process is different. Values are different. Sanskaras are different. You know. And that is why it is said that it is karaka for moksha. What is moksha? Moksha is not like after death somebody is going into swarga or somebody is uh, going in a very moksha karaka planet or something. No. Moksha means when you are detaching yourself from that particular situation without indulging in a wrong way. That is a moksha. That is moksha. But that is why fourth house is a moksha. When full day you are working like a Rahu and then at the end of the day, in late evening, you go to sleep, then you are in a moksha situation because in deep sleep, your sub-subconscious mind is activated, which is called as Ketu. That is why you get dreams. That is why you get intuitions. That is why you, you have your sixth sense very activated, specifically in Brahma Murta. So, fourth house is moksha. Automatically, every day you are getting moksha. Then, eighth house comes. Where you have affinity towards occult, you have affinity towards research, you want to know uh, hidden jewels of uh, Jyoti Shastra or any other Shastra, then again you are activating your Moksha house, that is eighth house. And when you are getting all the knowledge, when you are understanding the knowledge, when you are able to justify in a little manner to that knowledge, that time definitely Ketu is blessing you. And the twelfth house is a deep meditation. We can call it as a Samadhi. When you are away from the worldly affairs, when you are totally uh, uh, in control of the pleasures of life, because twelfth house is of pleasure also. And when, when you are released, that time also you are experiencing moksha. Twelfth house is Shaya Sut, twelfth house is bad pleasures. And when you get released with physical contact, 
that time moksha situation is there and when lots of uh, uh, lots and lots of pleasures you are getting in life in terms of wealth health uh, physical relationship everything and then you come to a situation where your actual 12th house gets activated when ketu starts working that yes now i have had enough in my life now i want to activate my 12th house no need to uh, uh, have ketu in 12th house only for that it is not necessary that if you have ketu in your 12th house of the chart then definitely you will get moksha not at all it totally depends on what rashi this ketu is posited in what nakshatra is this ketu posited and where is that rashi lord and where is that nakshatra lord in the chart then only you can just say that this person is good in meditation moksha is very far away you know and as this planet do not have mastak that is do not have mind so it do not have very strong uh, you know man also man means this is nirvikara as i said before and when man become when your heart or your soul becomes sthir that is steady that time atma becomes sthir your man means your thought process you do not have any thought process because there is no rahu there is no mind so the energy in you is coming in a steady mode and that is why you are able to concentrate you know and then comes that what rashi your ketu is posited if your ketu is posited in a uh, agni tatva rashi then automatically you have too much of aggression if it is a sthir rashi then you are a, a you know rajasic personality if it is in tamasic rashis then you you are lingering to get the things you are just running after the things but nothing is coming in your hand people say that you have everything but you are saying that i don't have anything but only one thing i will say that ketu will make you ultimate yogi ketu has capacity of it now many people say that ketu is very good in uh, sagittarius sign ketu is good with jupiter uh, it is exalted in dhanu rashi yeah, and it is debilitated in uh, mithuna rashi so it depends on totally your understanding that what you are thinking about many say that uh, 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 scorpio is also very good for ketu everyone has a different uh, you know views on it but basically you have to understand that what is actual ketu tapasya is ketu brahma gyan is ketu शिव गणेश भक्ति शिव गणेश उपासना शिव गणेश वर्शिपिंग इज केतु यू नो एंड ऑल दिस थिंग्स केतु इज एवरी ऑल ऑफ अस से दैट केतु वेर एवर इन वॉट एवर प्लैनेट इट इज पॉजिटिव विथ इट इज डिस्टर्बिंग द सिग्निफिकेशन ऑफ दैट प्लैनेट ऑल्सो येस ऑफकोर्स इट विल डिस्टर्ब द सिग्निफिकेशन बिकॉज केतु इज without head ketu will give you detachment from that particular planet's karakatva ketu will see that if ketu is posited with venus ketu will keep you away from the uh, enjoying the luxury thing in life even though you have so much of luxury or you are able to enjoy the things but still ketu will keep you lingering from that desires you know ketu will always see that something is lacking but once you are sthir once you are steady then definitely you are able to control the ketu being in worldly affair also being in material life also you can surrender to ketu you can control to ketu and for that you have to do uh, daily sadhana daily upasana mantra chanting you know and first thing keep in mind wherever your ketu is posited 
that house related signification you are uh, lingering for and yes definitely you have to work more on that house karakato like you you can make donations or you can just chant mantras of ketu nakshatra or ketu itself and uh, you have to spare some time for yourself your mental peace everything so this was about ketu next time we will talk about rahu so stay tuned with planet to soul astrology sapta mangal ho may all be blessed namaste